Hi everyone, this is Johnny O'News and I'm playing Starbound version 1.0 and in this Let's Learn video I'm going to teach you all about wiring. Now wiring can be a little bit more complicated so I'm going to slow it down a bit in this video but I will facilitate the slowness with some annotations at the bottom so that you can navigate to what you want to see. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first topic is going to be about triggers. Now I um, I categorize all these switches, buttons, consoles, and all these other things into what I would call a trigger. And the reason why I call it a trigger is because when you use one of these things, it's triggering something else to get powered. So uh, that's basically why I categorize it in that fashion. So within the category of of triggers, there are multiple types. So you have floor mounted buttons, you have wall mounted buttons. You have switches slash consoles are basically the same thing, as well as levers. And then you have detectors. And then you have some more complicated related things. So we're going to go over these real nice and slow so that you can see what they're all about. Now, floor mounted buttons, uh, basically they will trigger something to turn on as long as it's compressed, as long as you're standing on it. So if, as soon as I jump off of it, this light's going to go from green to red. And then if I jump back on it, it goes to red, or it goes to green. There we go. This is a, um, so this is a big button. This was a, uh, I think this is like a trap door or a tra uh, trap plate. This is a small button. So all three of these will stay on as long as you are standing on them. Wall mounted buttons behave a little bit differently. They merely stay on for a certain amount of time. So as you hit them, they'll stay on for about, looks like a second, second and a half. They seem to have the same uh, delay. So uh, you can use these to uh, trigger something and then have it trigger back off as soon as the delay is done. Then you have switches, which stay persistently on as long as they're in their second state. So you can just go do what you feel like you need to do and then head back and click on them again and it will turn off. And you have detectors. So these four detectors here, these three detectors here, the first one is a motion detector. As long as you're close to it, it will start to shine green and it will trigger whatever you have it connected to. Just like that. Then you have yourself a uh, water or a liquid detector. This will stay, stay on as long as there's water. But as soon as it's drained, it will turn off. There we go. Now it's red. This one is a light detector. So I am emanating a lot of light off of my um, my EPP uh, modification, light 2. So as soon as I run away, it will be low light and then no light. And this last thing I want to show you, this last trigger I want to show you, is um, basically, it's called the persistent switch. Now this allows you to create, to use buttons as if it were a switch. So I'll show you the wiring behind it real quick. So you have your on switch, or your on, your on button, and your off button. This goes into your alpha and beta slot here, and then the red will dictate what you want to trigger. So if I hit on, I'll get a green light. If I hit off, I'll get a red light. All right, so that is all, those are all the triggers that you can use to power up all the things in your base. The second topic is going to be about inputs and outputs for your wires. Now, all the objects that you have uh, built that have an input and output is represented by these two colors. You have red and you have blue. The inputs are this blue color here. The outputs are the red color. Let me just show you an example of, um, let's throw a wall button on here. So this only has an output. This is a, acts as a trigger here. So let's go ahead and connect this to the input of a door. As soon as we click on this, the door will open. And because it's a button, it will only stay open for a given amount of time. If we throw down a lever, as we saw in the first topic, I'm sorry, we throw down a, um, a switch, uh, you'll see that it'll persistently stay open as long as the console is considered on. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and close that guy. 
Now the other thing is some objects have both an input and an output, input and output. So if we connect the output of this door to this door, we can then open both doors with just one trigger. Makes it nice and easy to do more complicated things with it. Some of the uh, some of the switches as well as the uh, levers also have multiple inputs. So the persistent switch we showed you earlier has two inputs as well as one output. This switch here, which is called a small wall switch, has both an input and an output, where other switches only have an output. This allows you to chain things together uh, and allow you to, like I said, you know, cr create kind of a chain of events to occur with one switch or one trigger. All right, so that's how you connect things together. Uh, it's it's relatively simple. You just uh, connect the red to the blue. Uh, most of your triggers will have a an output slot. Let's go ahead and just throw a light down. Uh, let's see, we got light over here. There we go. Most objects, when they're placed, are going to stay in the on position. But as soon as they are wired up in some fashion, they will follow the rules of what the trigger's at. So if this is in the off position, the light's going to be off. So as soon as you turn it on, it'll be in the on position. The other thing is, uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is that you won't be able to open doors manually when something is wired up. And close it if uh, you've got a button but you can't really interact with the doors if you've got it wired up somehow but keep that in mind the persistent switch is a good example of something that has different types of inputs and outputs now as I was I said in the first topic this one has two of them one of them is your basically your on and the other one is your off so if we throw some buttons down, and I just want to show this twice because it's a little bit more on the complicated side, but basically a persistent switch is there to make buttons into switches, as well as other different types of functions. So as I did in the first topic, if I click on this, it's going to be in the on state. If I click on that, it's going to be in the off state. All right. And the uh, same thing happens with uh, proximity scanners and liquid scanners and all that good stuff. So there's going to be at least an output on most of these triggers. And you'll have to do some experimentation on which objects have input slots. So you just connect them using the wiring tool. And away you go. So the other thing that you'll notice too is when you're in the wiring mode and something turns on, you can see this red beam will indicate that there's power being driven to it. Like you can see the light is on, but if you're in wiring mode and you want to see if something's, you know, something's not working the way you expect it to, you can always look at these beams of light and if they're lit, that's how you know that there's power being transferred between an output to an input. All right, so that's basic wiring 101 there. So let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is going to be about switch gates. So uh, there's a lot of different switch gates you can use to create different functions within your base and your wiring systems. Now, the first one we're going to one we're going to talk about is the AND switch. Now, the AND switch requires two triggers to be connected to it. So you do that by connecting the outputs into the inputs of the gate, and then you output to what you want to trigger. Now, the AND gate requires both of the objects to be, or the, both of the triggers to be on to function. If one is off, it will turn this off and, 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 re and remove the power going to your target. The AND switch gate is great for if you're building a, like a set of traps. This allows you to have a trigger that will trigger the trap, as well as a trigger to either turn off and turn on the trap. So if you've got friends over or you got, you know, your friends in the multiplayer or come over to your base, you probably want to turn off all your traps or, or, or if you want, just let them die as well. That's always good. So this is a great, great function 
to use the the and gate. All right, the second gate here is the uh, countdown timer. This allows you to uh, basically dictate how long a, a button will be compressed. Let's go and give it a try. So you can see that the countdown goes down four, three, two, one, and it leaves the light on for that whole duration. This is great for when you want a button to last a little bit longer. Maybe you have a series of doors you want to keep open, but as soon as you pass through them, you want them to turn off. It's kind of a nice way of doing it. Uh, the way you wire it up is just basic output to input, output to input. Pretty easy. The next one is called a delay, delay gate. And what this will do is it will delay the, the trigger for about half a second. So you can see that it just half a second goes by before this is triggered. This is used for more complicated functions. Uh, and if you don't want things happening at the same time, you can delay them so that it gives them enough time to be able to uh, do their operation. I use this in my vertical elevator because the, uh, the rail switch and the uh, rail stop are occurring at the same time. It causes some problems of delaying the rail stop allows me to allows the whole thing to function a lot better and cleaner all right this one is called the or switch you can see by the fact there's like a little white line and then a little dark line going into the switch what this is is this is more of a basic switch that anything connected to it will either turn it on or off so if you have at least one switch on the whole thing will be on but no matter how much how many times i click this it's going to stay on. This is great for uh, if you want multiple switches uh, for your lights in your base. If you have one at the bottom floor or one at the top floor, it'll allow you to turn them on and keep them on uh, with the OR switch gate. So, that. Okay. Then you have a what's called a timer. So it's 0.5 seconds. So what this will do is we'll turn something I'll turn something off and on every half a second. Now this is great for when you want like a like an alert blackson to go off like red alert the lights are flashing you got some cool stuff going on so that's pretty fun so that's how you use the timer switch gate this one is called the xor switch and this one's really useful because uh it allows you to set up you know uh, you, you can use two switches here that as long as one is on and one and the other one is off you'll have something powered this is really great for having a series of doors to your entrance so that you can have one on the outside and then one on the inside so if let's say now i'm walking through my doors or i'm walking to my door i'm going to go open all the doors okay so i'm going to move through my doors and now i'm on the other side and now i'm going to go close all my doors it's a great way of uh using the xor switch gate as long as as long as one is off and one is on you're gonna have something powered all right the really useful one that I've, I've used in most of my more complicated endeavors is the not switch now there are a lot of different situations where uh, something's not functioning the way you want it to it may be functioning in half and then the opposite way that you want it to I've used this for both my elevator as well as my little airlock my simple airlock system that I built now the not switch will uh, reverse let's go into the wiring thing reverse what the switch is telling it to so basically the switch is, is on right now but it's now powering what is triggered to it so if i turn the switch on it will do the opposite of what you expect like i said i've used this for my uh, my rail systems i've used this for my airlock and i probably use it for a lot of other things because i like i like using buttons and buttons keep everything in the closed position or the off position. So it'd be nice to have something on and then I hit the button to turn it off. So this is a great uh, switch gate to use. All right, so this next one is called a latch. And I've got to apologize. I'm not exactly sure how this one really works, but I'm guessing this is a way to kind of save a state, like a save a power state. Now, uh, there are two inputs into this latch gate here looks like this where is it uh there it's right here so as you can see it's kind of like play and pause symbol now it kind of makes sense when you think about it there is like an alpha and a bravo 
in action here. The one that's on the top is considered Bravo. The one that's considered bottom is A or Alpha. Now what happens is if you turn on Bravo, it will then allow you to overwrite the state that it's in. So if I hit on on this one, it's now considered on. So if I have Bravo on, it's overriding the state of this particular switch. If I turn this off, it stays on no matter what. So this is a cool way of kind of saving the state. And I've seen some really crazy stuff and I'm gonna make sure to put a link in the description of some really complicated wiring systems that someone named, let's see what the person's name is. His name is CJ on the Starbound or the player uh, playstarbound.com forums put together a really insane guide for doing some stuff that just blows my mind to a point where I have no idea what he is saying. So if you are really interested in jumping to some really complicated things with with latches, I would really suggest taking a look at that guide. So those are all the switch gates. All right, folks, that's the end of my wiring tutorial. If you have any questions about wiring or Starbound in general, please leave a comment below. I will also include a link to a much more complicated wiring guide that I found on the playstarbound.com site. Uh, that's in case you want to do some really insanely complicated things that I am just, my brain is not geared for. I've read through it all and I still don't understand what's going on. But uh, hopefully uh, you'll you'll get what you can from my guide. And if you want to proceed further, please go ahead and use that guide on the on the PlayStarbound.com site. All right, folks. So this is Johnny O'Nose playing Starbound version 1.0. Thank you so much for watching.